and welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I want to discuss the concept of simultaneity. And simultaneity is a consequence of the theory of special relativity. And what I want to do is not discuss simultaneity in its general terms of how to understand it, but use a question from the exam paper, in this case, the 2011 HSC exam of physics, use it to explain how to answer this question. So if you know already a little bit about simultaneity, then by all means, go ahead, pause the video and have a go at answering this question. But I would want to go through the question and using simultaneity as an understanding. So here's a question and it talks about a thought experiment without actually literally reading the question out. Basically, you have a spacecraft over here and a light source releases a light pulse and travels to clock A and clock B. As the light pulse arrives at A and B, the timer starts. So it's all about the synchronization of these two clocks. We're asking what is observed by a person on the spacecraft and by a person on the ground. And the question actually assumes that there's a difference. In fact, the person on the spacecraft actually sees them starting at the same time and the person on the Earth sees them starting at different times. And you have to account for these observations. And this is clearly an example where you are having to show your understanding of simultaneity. So let's break it down. Now, remember the concept of simultaneity is the idea that any two events that may be perceived by one observer to be simultaneous, that is, they occur at the same time, are not necessarily perceived to be simultaneous or aren't simultaneous as observed by someone else in a different frame of reference. And that's, in essence, what simultaneity means. So let's explore the astronaut's perspective on this situation. And in this question, we have a light source. And that light, of course, produces waves of light, electromagnetic radiation, and they radiate out from the source. And they take a certain amount of time to get to A and to B. Now, the important thing to understand is, is that the speed of the light, as observed by the astronaut, is traveling at a constant speed. And in fact, that's the second postulate, that the speed of light is constant for all frames of reference. And so we have the speed equaling c in both cases. But what's really important, too, is that the distance from the light source to clock A and to B are the same. So the distance for A equals the distance to B. So what does that mean? Well, the time it takes for the light to travel to B is equal to the distance over the speed, which is C. It's clear that the time for both A and for B is identical because they travel the same distance. And of course, the speed of the light pulse is the same. And so therefore the times are the same, which means the clocks start at the same time. And that means they are simultaneous. So that's fine. I think we can understand that. But let's have a look at the perspective over here. So we've got an observer that is going to be situated, let's say, right there. And as far as they're concerned, they're going to see them not as simultaneous. Now, of course, the light over here is going to move across like this. And the light over here is going to move across like this. But the thing is, is that the time for A is equal to the distance over the speed. But the speed, of course, is always going to be the speed of light. But the problem is, is that while the light is receding or moving towards A, A is actually moving in that direction. So therefore, the distance that we have for A is going to be of a certain value, right? And of course, that's going to be divided by C. Now, for B, that's the same. But the thing is, the B is receding away. So therefore, the time for B is equal to the distance it travels to get to B divided by C. But here's the problem. The distance for A is going to be smaller than the distance for B because, as I said, A is moving towards it, so it somehow meets up with the light waves as they move away this way. And that's similar, of course, for B. B is moving away and sort of running away from the light source. 
But because the speeds are the same, that is the speed of light is always measured to the same, then the only conclusion that you can make is that the time for A, because DA is smaller, is shorter than time for B. And that's because, as I said, the time A has a shorter distance to travel to start. The first thing is what you're going to see is you're going to see A start first, and of course B is going to start second, because the time is going to take longer to get to B. So if A starts first and B starts second, then the, obviously the two times are not synchronized. So as far as, as a stationary observer thinks, they are two separate events, not at the same time, not simultaneous. But clearly the astronaut sees them at the same time. So clearly now we have an example where the astronaut's experience is different to the stationary observer's experience. But because both measure the speed of light as constant, therefore the only conclusion is, according to the astronaut, they are simultaneous. According to the Earth, they are not simultaneous. And there lies in simultaneity. So just to finish off, if you are doing this question, it's really important that you discuss both the perspectives of both the astronaut on the spacecraft and also of the person on the ground. And you explicitly refer to the concept of simultaneity. So the question was actually equal with four marks. So the best responses will talk about both uh, perspectives with the explanation of how the um, B is receding away and A is approaching the light waves and the fact that this shows you simultaneity. Hope that helps you. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.